and principles. Well, principle, uh, like I mentioned, is an entity that can request a SQL Server resource. It can be at the server level or at the database level. The server level can um, yet again have two levels, the Windows or SQL Server. The Windows uh, can be a local login or a domain login. And as for as the SQL Server, that will um, be a SQL login. For best practices, Microsoft recommends that you should only use window level principles and leverage the um, security and uh, other features of the Windows operating system. Next you have the database level principles. Uh, these would include things like a database user, a database role, and an application role. As far as the roles in SQL Server 2008, um, a role, uh, like I mentioned, is the same thing as a group in Windows. It is a collection of principles for easy management. There are two types of roles, a server role and a database role. A server role, uh, server level roles are basically, there are two types. One is a fixed server role because, uh, actually, uh, I take that back. The server roles are always fixed server roles because you cannot change them. However, the database roles can be um, fixed database role that are predefined and we will take a look at this in our demo. Or you can have a flexible database role that you can create and change. Uh, the database role again makes it easier to manage the permissions in your database. So uh, enough about the terminology and the discussion of these topics. I really want to uh, jump uh, into the management studio so I can show you some of this uh, in action. So to launch uh, management studio we go to start all programs Microsoft SQL Server 2008 and then management studio uh, I am running uh, this on my um, desktop which is uh, Windows Vista and uh, as for a SQL Server I'm using a um, Enterprise Eval Edition. So I will expand the database tab and then uh, the, the database we're going to use today is a sales database and I really have one table in there called item master you can uh, take a look at this data real quick so we have about 1500 rows um, and some uh, type of uh, hardware data. So, so let's uh, let's go ahead and um, this is the plan of action. We will create a um, SQL Server login, and then um, after that, we will try to access this data and uh, play a little bit with permissions. Uh, I will uh, primarily show you how to do this in a Management Studio you can uh, script a lot of these tasks and uh, if you have time at the end we will uh, I will show you that so uh, first thing I will go ahead and minimize the data uh, database tab and I will expand the security tab and I will go to login and I will go ahead and select new login I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, sales user for this then you, you select SQL Server authentication the password I will uh, try to use the same as login name which is definitely not a um, preferred option um, also for production you want to enforce your password policy which is going to give you a combination of uh, alphanumeric values but for now to keep things simple I will uncheck those and notice you have the option for enforce password expression also default database I will change that to sales 
and there are other tabs but let's go ahead and click OK for now. Now if you go to uh, expand the logins tab you will notice there's the sales user so I will go ahead and double click on it get back into the uh, same screen. Next is the server role. Um, let me I will uh, leave this window open and actually go ahead and double click on here. Uh, you will notice these are the server roles that are out of the box. You cannot add or change these. Um, server roles typically have to do with the uh, permissions on the server level. So one of the ones, actually the, the strongest server role is the sysadmin role. And um, it maps to you know different accounts, but one the one that's used commonly is the SA. And for security reasons, you always want to change uh, the password on, of SA regularly or even disable that account. Um, so for this role, one of the users is SA. Uh, I have myself in there. And for best practices, you want to limit the number of users in this server role. And there are some other ones too, uh, like this server role, the DB creator, is used to create uh, databases. So I will uh, <coughs> switch back to uh, where I was. Uh, okay, so actually, let me just go back to the sales users. This is where I was. So for server role for this user, I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Notice that there is one role that's already selected. Every person, uh, every login in SQL Server is going to be part of this role, uh, which is the similar concept as uh, everyone at the Windows uh, domain level. User mappings, uh, the user mapping tab is the important one. This is where you will actually give it access to the uh, database. So I will go ahead and select sales. Uh, the default schema I will leave it unchecked and down here in this section you'll see that it's asking you for a database role. For now I will um, leave this unchecked and click OK. <clears throat> so notice here this is uh, I am running this if you notice down here uh, this is the login information I am uh, running the SQL statement. If I click on execute, it returns data. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then try to connect to the SQL server using the new account that we just created. It's called sales underscore user. And it opens up a new connection down here. I will right click on it and open up a new query window and paste it. Now if you notice below it will tell you that this, this session is being run by sales underscore user. And I tried to run the same query and it says the select permission was denied on the object. So that's a good thing. But that's telling you that out of the box, uh, this option is not enabled. So now I will uh, go back to this window over here. Now notice this connection is uh, from the admin uh, user, which once again it's uh, the user called cache. I would go ahead and double click on it, go back to the user mappings which recall is uh, the one that controls access to the database. I will select the sales database and uh, go ahead. let's go ahead and give this user a DB underscore data reader database role. That one will let you uh, select data but will not let you change it. I will click OK. Now I'm still in the same session as the sales underscore user. I will go ahead and try to execute this. And notice now the uh, command works great. So in a nutshell, what I did was I, tr I created a user so far. I tried to run a select statement, which did not work. 
initially. Then I went back and added that user to the db underscore data reader database role and this uh, this made it possible for the user to look at the data. Now let's say uh, I want to go ahead and try to do an insert statement down here. Um, and what I've done is I've copied this code. This is a simple insert statement. By the way, if you're not used to some of the SQL statements, um, we do have um, another session on uh, this. All we really talk about is transact SQL, so that would be worth uh, watching that video as well.